Hi, I'm Jeff Bartles, Infrastructure Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and today we're going to be looking at a continuation of the Technical Academy series called Infrastructure Design Suite Workflows. In this session, we're going to look at how we can create a customized guardrail for use in InfraWorks. This session will represent part one of the operation. On my screen is an image that was taken of an existing bridge. This bridge is going to be part of a bridge reconstruction project. Here in the foreground, we can see a guardrail. I would like to create a model of this bridge in InfraWorks. And while InfraWorks has some nice guardrail options, it didn't have anything that matched this guardrail exactly. So what I did was I created my own guardrail. Here we can see the InfraWorks model I created. Let me switch to a different bookmark. I'll pick one that's a perspective similar to that photograph. Right here we can see the guardrail that I created. The purpose of this session is to show you how I generated this guardrail. I'm starting over here in Civil 3D. You can see that I have part of my model built already. Let me hold the shift key and the mouse wheel. We'll tip this back so we can see the geometry. Currently I have guardrail on three of the four corners. I have this remaining corner left. I'm going to type Z for zoom and P for previous to go back to my previous view. Let's start by typing XREF. I'll do that to bring up the external references palette. I will then right click on this XREF and I'll choose reload. This drawing represents the surveyed geometry. Let me close the palette. Right here we can see the surveyed guardrail. From here, I'm going to go to the Express Tools tab, and I'll open the Blocks panel, and I'll choose Copy Nested Objects. I want to copy one of the objects from the external reference into the current drawing. I'll select this edge. This is the edge that represents the geometry that was surveyed. I'll press Enter. And then for a base point, I'll choose 0, 0, and I'll press Enter twice. When I'm finished, I'll type XREF again. I'll right click and we'll unload this external reference and then I'll close the palette. So we copied that entity into the current file. Once again, I'm going to hold my shift key in the mouse wheel. We'll tip this up and we can see that that geometry is not at an elevation. Looks like it's just a polyline. Let me do another zoom previous to go back to a top view. Now I do have a surface in this drawing. Over here on the prospector tab, I'm going to open the surfaces group. Let me right click on the surface and I'll choose select. And then under surface properties, let's change the style to existing one and five and I'll click OK. What I'd like to do is convert this polyline into a three dimensional object that matches my surface. I'm going to do that by using a feature line. We'll go to the home tab. I'll open the feature line menu and I'll choose create feature lines from objects. I'll select this object and press enter. I'm going to keep the default site and style for right now. I'd like to erase the existing entity and I'd like to assign elevations. Let me click OK. I'd like to base the elevations on this existing surface and I'd like to insert intermediate grade break points. This will change this entity as though it was, it'll make it as though it was spray painted along the top of the surface. I'll click OK and then let me hold the shift key in the mouse wheel. Let me tip this up and we can see that object is now at the correct elevation. Once again, I'll do a zoom previous. Let's turn the surface off. I'll do that by selecting it. We'll go back to surface properties and I'll change the style back to no display. Now let's create some of the geometry for the guardrail. Here I have a couple of polylines. These represent cross sections. This one is a cross section of the post. This one represents a cross section of the rail. I would like the post to be 2.75 feet above ground. Let me hold the shift key in the mouse wheel. We'll tip this up. Let me focus back on my geometry. And then I'm going to change the workspace. Let me open the workspace menu and I'll choose 3D modeling. This loads the AutoCAD 3D modeling ribbon. I will then launch the extrude command. I'll select this geometry and press enter. And then I'm going to extrude this up a height of 2.75. And I'll press enter. Next, I'm going to launch the circle command. And I'm going to create a circle here at the midpoint of this front edge, just as a placeholder momentarily. That's because I would like this post to exist below ground a little bit as well, maybe two feet. To do that, I'll launch the copy command and I'll select the post and press enter. I will then pick a point on screen 
and then I'll tap the F8 key to lock my ortho. And as I pull this down, you can see how it says negative Z. I'm copying this straight down. I'll just type 2 and press Enter, and I'll press Escape when finished. Then I'll come back to the menu. Up here to the ribbon, I'll, I'll use the Union command, and I'll select both of my solids, and I'll press Enter. That unions them together. They become a single object. The circle now represents the base point, uh, my insertion point for this post. To insert the post, I'm going to turn it into a block. Let me type block. I'll press enter. And then for name, I'm going to call this underscore rail post. Pick point. That'll be the center of this circle. Select objects. I'll select my solid and I'll press enter. And then I'll click OK. I have now turned this object into a block. Let's pan out. What I'd like to do now is insert the block along this object. Well, if I hover over the object, I can see it's still a feature line. I'm going to turn this into a 3D polyline. I'll do that by exploding it. Let me launch the explode command. I'll select the feature line and press enter. I will then use the measure command. I'll type measure. What object do I want to measure? This one. I want to measure it using a block. What block name? underscore rail post align block with object yes and then the length of my segment will do every four feet if I tip this up we can see how that post was inserted in 3d along that object now due to the nature of this command it does not insert a block at the very beginning of the line so we'll just copy one over let me launch the copy command I'll select this block and press enter we'll copy it from the insertion point to the end of the line. Now that I have my posts finished, let's take care of the rail. I'm going to use the move command. Let's select this 3D polyline and I'm going to move it from the insertion point of the post and we'll place it to the midpoint of the top edge. This now represents the entity that I will be extruding or sweeping this shape along to create the rail. As I look at this in 3D space, I can see this line has a little bit of a kink in it, and I don't want the rail to have a kink, so I'm going to remove this unnecessary vertex. I'll do that by double-clicking. I'll choose Edit Vertex, and you can see the place marker right there. Let me choose Straighten. I'd like to turn Straightening on. I will then choose Next until I get past that unnecessary vertex. When I do, I'll choose Go to take it out. Let me click Exit, and then I'll click Escape to get out of the command. To create the rail, I'm going to use the sweep command. Sweep is like a more powerful version of extrude. We can find sweep in the extrude menu. Let me choose sweep. I'll select the object I want to sweep and press enter. Notice some of the additional options that we don't have in the extrude command. I'm going to choose base point. This allows me to select the point of the object I'd like to sweep along the line. I'll choose the end point right here, and then I'll come up and choose my path. Now that's almost perfect. When you do a sweep, it is based on the direction the polyline was drawn. Not a, not a problem. I can always either you know flip that object 180 or reverse it, or I could just take and use the move command. Let me select the rail, and I'll pick it up from this upper end point, and I'll move it down to the lower end point. Let's orbit this around. We'll pull it down, and we can see how that rail wraps in 3D along all of the posts. Let me hit escape, and then we'll change the visual style momentarily so we can see the geometry reflect light. We are looking at this using the conceptual style. So things are looking good. The only thing I have left to do is create this flared end where the guardrail meets the bridge. And we'll look at how we can do that in the next session. If you found this content helpful, please rate it by clicking the thumbs up icon. This will help other AKN users identify valuable content. For Autodesk, this is Jeff Bartle saying thank you for watching.